Our top story tonight on Gravitas is about the Ukraine war. The situation has intensified. Today, the United States closed its embassy in Kiev in anticipation of a major airstrike by Russia. This is big. You see, in the almost three years of the war, the United States has never had to shut down its embassy in Kiev. And it's also rather unusual for America to advise its citizens in Ukraine to be ready to seek shelter without delay. And the warning, by the way, came just a day after Ukraine used American attack mis missiles for the first time to target Russian territory. In fact, Ukraine's action had prompted a strong response from Russia. But the question really is, as President Zelensky pins his hopes on the American attack mess to fight Russia, can he stop Putin's forces? And I ask that question because of the Russian response to Ukraine's attacks. Today, the U.S. Embassy had to close out of an abundance of caution, quote-unquote. Washington informed American citizens in Ukraine to stock up on water, food, medications. It had to warn Americans to be ready for a potential temporary loss of electricity and water due to Russian attacks. And following the American embassy's decision to stay shut for the day, the Italian Greek embassies in Kiev were also closed. The Italian embassy, in fact, said it was closed to the public as a precautionary measure but remains operational. The Greek embassy also closed its doors following the U.S. warning. Meanwhile, the French embassy stayed open but advised its citizens to exercise caution. The fear of a Russian strike came after Russia conducted an airstrike on Kiev in the early hours of Wednesday morning. And when asked about the strike, the Kremlin spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, refused to comment, directing the query to the Defense Ministry. Meanwhile, a war of words continued over Russia's decision to upgrade its nuclear doctrine. The U.S. and allies reacted sharply after Putin on Tuesday lowered the threshold for nuclear strike as a warning to the West. And criticizing the decision, White House called the decision irresponsible rhetoric. The U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller, in fact, said that the United States has not seen any reason to adjust its own nuclear posture in response to Moscow's decision. Listen in. We have not seen any reason to adjust our own nuclear posture, um, but we will continue to call on Russia to stop uh, bellicose and irresponsible rhetoric. Remember, Russia decided to alter its nuclear policy after the U.S. lifted the ban on Ukraine's use of long-range weapons to attack Russia. And with that decision, the U.S. essentially crossed Putin's so-called red lines in the war. On Wednesday, Russian spy chief Sergei Narishkin said in an interview that NATO's decision for Ukraine will not go unpunished. Narishkin warned that Russia will retaliate against NATO countries that facilitate long-range missile strikes against Russian territory by Ukraine. He said changes to Russia's nuclear doctrine meant that it was impossible to defeat Russia on the battlefield. He's not entirely wrong. Russia has the upper hand in the battlefield. Russian forces continue to make advances on the battlefield. On Wednesday, in fact, Russian forces reportedly took control of a Ukrainian settlement called Ilinka in Donetsk region. And a day before, the Russian Defense Ministry said that its army had taken control of Novoselivka. Fierce fighting was also reported in Kharkiv, Avdivka, Zaporizhia and Kherson over the past 24 hours. Not just that, Russian forces also hit Ukrainian military personnel and destroyed dozens of military vehicles, including tanks, armored vehicles, cars. Meanwhile, Ukraine, for its part, intends to cling to its controls in Russia's Kursk region. Ukraine intends to use it as a bargaining chip when a U.S. president-elect, when the U.S. president-elect Donald Trump takes office in January. Remember, Trump has promised to end the war in a day when he takes office. According to reports, Biden administration approved arming Kiev with anti-personnel landmines. It's a decision that will reportedly help Ukraine slow down Russian advances in its eastern front lines, especially when used along with other munitions from the United States. Washington reportedly expects Ukraine to first use the mines in its own territory. 
And when questioned about the alleged decision by Washington to provide Kiev with anti-personnel landmines, the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, said it seemed the outgoing Biden administration was entirely dedicated to persisting with the war in Ukraine. With Biden's time in office running short, it appears that some U.S. allies are becoming increasingly tired of the war. Turkey's president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, representing a NATO voice, has stated that Ukraine and Russia should prioritize peace and exercise restraint. In fact, he said that he is opposed to Biden's decision, allowing long-range Ukrainian attacks on Russia. Remember, Erdogan has also consistently sought to position Turkey as a mediator in the conflict, and he has suggested a peace plan that would basically require Ukraine to postpone any NATO membership aspirations for a minimum of 10 years. His peace initiative also includes freezing the current front lines, and this would basically require Ukraine to cede territory to Russia, while Russia would need to acknowledge that it has not achieved complete control over the four Ukrainian regions it annexed in 2022. However, neither Ukraine nor Russia appear keen on freezing the conflict. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said that the option of freezing the Ukraine war does not suit Russia, but he restated that President Putin was open to the idea of negotiations. President действительно неоднократно, а точнее постоянно заявляет о том, что он готов к контактам и к переговорам. Это первое. Президент также уже говорил о том, что какой-то вариант заморозки заморозки э, этого конфликта э, нам не подойдет. Нам важно достичь своих целей, которые всем хорошо известны. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky has also vehemently opposed the idea of freezing the war. During a speech marking 1,000 days since the war started, Zelensky urged Europe to push Russia harder. Yeah. 1,000 days. I think it's enough to understand that Putin doesn't want any peace. Even on this day, this is a fact and not just some words, not rhetoric. I mean, even on this day, they killed our civilians. Even especially on this day, they presented nuclear weapons strategy. Why? They didn't present peace strategy. Did you hear it? Did you read about it? No, of course. Of course, nuclear weapons strategy. Putin wants war. And as the situation stands right now, forget about ending the war. The focus should be on managing the escalation. But the question then arises, is it even possible for meaningful talks to take place when both the sides seem so entrenched in their positions? To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.